back together again. She goes from one, she has flight of ideas. She's you know what I'm talking about? You go from one thing to another. <laughs> I know. Plus, um, uh, Virginia uh, Pitcher was talking about the house that Rachel lived in when she was a school teacher here. Yes. And it's called the Hen House. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, That's right. Wood next door. Oh boy, she was a something else. She was something. Yeah. <clears throat> what about Ada Wood? Tell me. Let's start out. With, what do you remember about Ada Wood? Well, uh, she liked to talk, <laughs> and uh, I, th I can. I think I remember my father said he took her out one time, and it was a big laugh because I don't. She was not too attractive, and uh, but she was, a, you know, she just lived there, and she's related to the the gal that writes for uh, the Spotlight. What is her name? Um, not Alison Bennett. Yes, that's her niece. Oh. Her mother that's and Ada the, Wood were sisters. That's the person she came out to visit. Sure. That. Oh, she, she used to tell me she used to come out to visit somebody. Oh. Absolutely. Yes. That's who it was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Allison loves words, though. Oh, yes. Loves I went to high school with her. Well, Al well, I think she's younger than I am. She didn't graduate with me in my class. Too. I went to Bethlehem Central High School, you know. Oh. We was two years up here, and then from there we went, we were bused to Bethlehem Central. Yeah. When you say bus, you mean what? Well, they had a Hunkerford bus line, and it was independently owned. And I think we had to wait on the corner by the Methodist Church here, and they would pick us up. They didn't go house to house like the buses do today. Huh. And there was only the sophomore year, and from then we went to Delmar. Uh -huh. You mentioned earlier you went to grammar school? At first, my first school, I went to nursery school, way up for when Mrs. Fosberg. And it was really something. And when I think about it, we learned so many things up mm -hmm. there. We walked from my, my friend Marjorie Albright Hainer lived in the house here with a brick front. And we would walk all the way down Boriesville Avenue, up Center Street, all the way to the end where Bosbergs lived. That was a long walk when you're four years old. And winter and summer, and we went. and. I don't know how much my mother paid Mrs. Fosberg, but we were read stories, and we had lunch hours, we rested, we had little prayers, and then in the, when the weather permitting, the best was I remember was going back into the woods. I learned everything about the nature, the wildflowers. I saw trailing arbutus, dogtooth violets. Uh, what else? Every kind of violet going, um, pinksters, things that are, you know, not, are obsolete today, you know. And birds, we learned about birds. And uh, it was just, uh, it was a nice school, really. And I think she taught us to, you know, take our coats off and put them on, and our shoes, and she taught us so many things. And, and we, you know, she was so calm and peaceful. They were very nice people, the Vospers, very well educated, more than a lot of the people were, you know. And, uh, and, and how many people were at the school? Well, there was Marjorie and I, and I think Jean Fryer, who was be a, of Conrad Fryer, who would be a great granddaughter, would be Margaret, Margaret Barrowman's sister. Mm -hmm. She has died. I, th I don't know if Margaret went or not, and maybe Lois Alpenbrecht. I'm not sure, because she didn't live. I can't remember. We, we, there was a few of us. I don't know if Wesley Jacobs and I don't know who all went, but my mother was great for school. She liked me to go to school, and and, uh, and it, it was we were just four years old. And of course, there weren't cars on the road to have to worry about and child molesters and things, I guess. And uh, but it, it's I, we had a good time. And then from we went into first grade. And I often think, I don't know when I learned how to read hmm. or write. I just did. Hmm. No big deal. No. Nobody tested us when we went to school. We just had to learn. <laughs> and some went that weren't as smart as some others, and even handicaps were right in the school with us. Mm -hmm. 
And, and uh, did uh, Mary Rosenberg's daughters ever help out with the school, do you remember? I can remember. See, her, her daughter, daughter was the doctor, the obstetrician. And uh, in fact, she delivered my grandson in Bellevue Hospital. And then the other daughter was a librarian, Marion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can re remember him. He was a tall man. But that's a long time ago, and they were older. Mary, and those girls were older than I was, well, I would think. Oh, I, uh, by like 20 years. Well, maybe. And Mildred yeah. Guffin was older than I well, was. Mildred's 81. Is she? And Marion Bosberg has got to be 88 or 89. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But Doc died recently, and she was, what, 92? Oh, right yes, or maybe older. I don't know. Yeah. She was a, oh, she was a lovely lady. She delivered so many babies, a thousand, I guess. It was a lot, huh? Yes. Um, you said that when you went to the kindergarten, that Mary would read to you? Or? Oh, yes. We had story hour. It was really well uh, organized. And I can remember the one room had the fireplace, and we had picture books. We had, we learned an awful lot. Um, Virginia Maxwell showed me a book. Robert Louis Stevenson's The Child's Garden in the Verse. Yes. 1923, that Mary had given to her. Really? Says to uh, Virginia Smith. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, though, she instilled us in to, to read, you know. I've got an old book here of, I don't know where how old it is, but of all the old verses. So what year did you go there, Ren? So you're 61 now. I'm 69. I must have been. So 65 years ago. Yeah. About four, like I was four years old, so. I wasn't living in this house. I lived over here, and I also lived in that house there. Uh -huh. So. Uh, now you mentioned you also went to school over here. In the upper, up in the Zay owns it now. Bidwell owns yes. it now. Up in the upper story, that was the first and first and second grade. The house or the building in the back? Just up the upper floor. Of, of this, of the this Zay house. Zay, yes. Oh. Yes. And what was what was that like? I mean, when you, when well, it was just desks, and I can remember the teacher. I think it was Miss Van Dusen was the teacher, hmm. and uh, there was a great big pot-bellied stove, and and uh, we went up the back stairs, and that was it. And one of the things I remember so once in the winter, the snow came off the roof. And it buried one of the kids, went right under the, and boy, the teacher went out, and my mother lived up, and they went out with their bare hands and got this boy out, you know. And when he was all right, of course, they got him right out. But there was, the snow was deep, and though, I think we had more snow than we do now. I think so, too. And uh, we used to, we, there, we'd go out and play, first and second grade, and from there, we went up to the others, the three-room schoolhouse, the third and fourth. But then in the fifth grade, I went to the, the, this elementary school. I was fifth and sixth grade was in one room. Uh -huh. Was it a three-room schoolhouse then? Or? That was a three-room. There was third and fourth, fifth and sixth, and seventh and eighth, and Mr. Boughton was principal. And first and second were over here then? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, this the right, second floor of the Zay House right here? Yeah, where the, the green porch is. Yeah, yeah. the house yeah. used to be the Grange Hall. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It used to be the Grange Hall. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Boughton lived right next door. I don't can't remember when he bought that house. He lived on Pleasant Street for, or, yeah, way up on Pleasant Street for a while. Now somebody told me there's a building in the back about a few more houses down. There's a building in the back that someone said they used that as a school house. Oh yes, that's where my nephew lives, Glenn Schultz. They did use that, but that was, <laughs> that was uh, when I was old, older, you know, because we lived here. And the list is on tape, so I can't say what I want to say. Just, we, nobody, we'll you edit, could cut it out? We'll we, we, because Marguerite edit. taught there. Yeah. <laughs> she used to, we could hear her yell. Oh, My father would say, listen to her mouth. <laughs> no wonder how the kid's going to learn anything. She's scaring the hell out of the kids. <laughs> you could hear her. Is she pretty tough? She was a good disciplinarian. Okay. She was a good teacher. but. I heard that she and Ann Van Alinda were pretty tough. Oh, I had her in fifth grade. She slapped me right across the face one day. I stuck my tongue out. 
thing. And you didn't go home and tell your mother in those days. You might get another one, right? Before you got it out of your mouth. What'd you do to the teacher? <laughs> but she was a good, fair teacher, Ann, and uh, was fifth in the sixth grade. And, uh, you know, all of them, like Harold Mead, I remember he was in the sixth grade. He was a grade ahead of me. And uh, <clears throat> I remembered making an Indian village when I was in the fifth grade with Ann Van Linda. And we went out and we got bark off of a bark uh, tree. Bark, what, a, what tree do I am talking about? To make the canoes. Birch. Bar birch tree. Birch mm -hmm. tree. And we made little canoes. And we had wigwams and Indians. I can remember. It was, quite, it was in the corner. I can remember. And that's where I saw the Indian or the gypsies go down one time. We were sitting there, and a bunch of them went down the road come, going past, like from New Salem on down, with well, their covered wagons. Well, talk about the gypsies a little bit. What, what did you see, and, uh, and, and who was there, and what did they look like? Well, that when we just watched going down, they'd have they had wagons with old furniture up. But every year they would come through the village, and the one that was most vivid, and Marjorie Hainer will vouch for this, right up the road here where Burgoons lived. We used to play, <clears throat> and the whole band of them came up through. And we were, they told us that they would steal little girls. My grandmother used to tell me that. And this little gyp this gypsy lady was in a cute little wagon, in a little buggy it was. She had a little white dog. And she said to us like this to come over to see her dog. Well, we were petrified. We ran so fast to get to where Marjorie lived down a couple houses. We thought, sure, they were going to steal us. And they, and she was a little, I can see her, a little bit of a white hair sitting there. And she says, come see our my little dog. Come on, girls, come see her. You know, we thought they were going to, they'd have the horses and the, you know. Remember that just as well as anything. That was before we saw them up in the, but every year they came. <clears throat> And they used to come in the store when my father was in the Schaefer store. And if he saw them, he'd just lock the door because they'd steal. They'd come in with their big skirts and they had pockets and they'd push up and this and they'd get your attention. One would get the attention and the others would do the stealing. And they'd come over here when Severson was here and Clifford would holler and yell, tell them to get out and everything. But they'd come for ice or something. So, but I've always been afraid of gypsies. One time they came in the hospital when I was working, and I wouldn't even go in the lobby to come home because they were going to put a hex on the doctor. They camped right in the main lobby and wouldn't budge. That was about 69, right? Yes. I remember that. Sure. But they don't see them anymore. Yeah. They come in Cadillacs now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we had good times when we were little. We really did. <clears throat> now, Vera, where did they stay? Do you, do you ever remember if they stayed any place? I place? think that up in the mountain, or I know in later years they used to go up in, in Thatcher Park, but they would kick them out if they knew they were there. Uh -huh. And one time they were up there and they'd do dances, and then they, if the police would kick them right out, they'd have, you know. Yeah. What, where they came from? Southern part of the down Florida way, I, I think, I don't know. Oh. Don't they originate in Italy and Spain? I don't know. So, but they're, they have a night, they do, they have a, there's some good gypsies, I guess, I don't know. My grandmother knew them, they used, she's from the Schoharie Valley, my father's mother, and she used to tell me, she's the one who got me scared of them, she would tell me about the gypsy ladies, all the potions they made and all this and all that, you know, and how they, she says they take children and she got me mm -hmm. sort of scared. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, talk a little bit about, the, let's, let's switch topics, talk a little bit about the grocery store. Oh, well, that's where, right next to where the library is, at its apartment there, right next to where the dentist is. It was just a little store and had a pop belly stove in it. And, my mother's uncle owned the whole building. George Smith owned it. And of course, he was an older man, and he'd come and sit in the, there by the fire all the time. He wanted to see people coming and going. And uh, my father ran the store, <clears throat> and they brought things in in bulk. He had to do up the sugar in five-pound packages and the flour and the butter. If anybody came in, they had little 
cardboard, you know, boat type things, and he would weigh out the butter. They wanted a pound or whatever it was. They had no frozen things, of course. They did have some bananas, and, and then, I don't know, somebody must have delivered bread. Hageman Bakery in that time, I don't think it was Fryhofer, would li leave bread in the porch in the early morning, you know. And, uh, but my mother helped him on Saturday when I was little. We'd hustle down there and we'd go, I'd have to go, and then I'd stay all day. And there was a lady upstairs that I'd stay with. In fact, she's still living. She's living down in Pennsylvania. And um, what was her name? Stefan. And they lived, the Stefan farm was up on Altamont Road, and I don't know which one it was. It might have been the one, I, I can't really say which one it was. It might have been the one that burnt that one there. That, mm -hmm. And uh, she's still living. But I played, and I played with the, the Herwigs were there, and Russo, Douglas Russo, and he's dead. And uh, we played in back of, there was an old water tank in back of the shed, back of the church. They used that church. We used to climb in that, and <laughs> we'd get all dirty. Douglas's mother would grab a stick and belt us, well, get out of that day. <laughs> and uh, we would ride in sleigh ride, and we'd sleigh ride down that center. You know, there wasn't many cars, but you'd have, we'd have to steer off, you know, somebody. But we were always doing something, I tell you. Go back to the store for a second. You said it was a popular store. Did people, even in those days, still sit around here at night? Did I don't know. It, it wasn't open at night. I think it closed around, you know, 5, 6 o'clock. But I can remember my, it was my great uncle. He was just sitting there. Of course, he owned the building. All right. And he'd just sit there, you know. And, uh, but my father, and it was good because it was during the Depression that my father had that. So I actually didn't suffer during the Depression, like some people, you know, people were suffered. They didn't have food, some people, enough to eat, and no jobs or anything, you know. But um, now, did you, your father, did he have another store at one time, too? No, no. I don't know. He. <clears throat> He, came, he was in Canada for a while. He worked for a towel supply outfit up there. And then he came down here. And then he had bought a farm up on Clip Road, and that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. And then I, see, I think when I was a baby, I lived in Schenectady a little while. And then I moved in this house over here next to the upstairs. And then I moved here, and then my father bought this house. Mm -hmm. When I was nine years old, I was here. Now, he was an older person, right? My father, my parents were older when I was born. My father was 41, my mother was 39. Right. Which, today, they have children, you know, but they were always, they seemed older to me, I don't know. Did they sell milk in the store, you know? Or was it just delivered by... Uh, I was Bell? delivered by Minard Crowns and Seversons. They used to deliver it. It's a, it was unpasteurized, and they just, you had a pail, and they'd bring it and dump it in your pail to the door as I can remember. But then Severson's bottled it later on and took it to be pasteurized down at Yeoman's Inn. But they delivered raw milk a lot. And nobody, I didn't hear much undulant fever once in a while. I guess Coftry, Mr. Coftry had it, Gladys Coftry's husband got undulant fever. Mm -hmm. but, uh, of course, when they started pasteurizing, that was, but they, I had raw milk. And did you give me a, didn't I make a copy of a picture that you lent to me? Was that your father in the store? Oh, yes. I don't know where it is now. Yeah. Yeah. There was another, who was well, that's another store. Then he opened up a store with Virginia Maxwell's husband, Pitcher. Yeah. They had a store down on the other side of the street where maybe the laundromat is or yeah. in there someplace. That was another store he had. That wasn't the Schaefer store. Oh, so he did have another store. Yes, yeah. Now, the woman who, <clears throat> who was in the picture, who, who you told me? Oh, that Tink, Tiffsy Tinko, I think her name was. She was had this little room down on the end. She had sandwiches and everything. And uh, she was a character, really. They used to tease her, and she, you know, she'd come out with some dillies, you know. And uh, she was a good person. I never know what happened to her. You described it as what, a tea room? I, I don't know what it was. <laughs> I think she 
she served sandwiches or I don't know what she did, but she used to come up to the store and, and uh, I wonder if Virginia might know something about her. Because Harold used to tease her, terrible her, her Virginia's husband there, first husband. I have to, uh, Ask her if she remembers Tootsie. I, I to she her. was a real Tootsie Tinkle. Tootsie Tinkle. Well, I can see her hair. I can just see her hair was gray, straight right, straight back, shaved right off. And uh, I don't know where she came from or where she went to. So, but we, as I say, we had, we did a lot. Never. We didn't have television. That's one thing. We had to amuse ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Margie and I played a lot. We used to play house with dolls. And, and we had, she lived up here, and we'd uh, sift dirt and make mud pies, let them dry, and turn them out. And they'd come out just pretty much if we were careful. And, uh, and then, then with the church activities, we always went to those things, you know, the picnics. And the movies down the, at night, down at, uh, and I think I can remember going to the first moving picture in Altamont, and it was Moby Dick. My father went up there. It was in the Masonic Hall in Altamont. It was one of the first, I think it was the first moving picture they showed around here. Because I remember we went there. Hmm. And you used to go to the Odd Falls Falls in the movie. Oh, yes. What was that like? Describe that. What was the hall like? And well, it was, they had a balcony up on top, and uh, they had all seats down at the bottom, and, and uh, Gert said she played there. I don't remember her playing, but I do remember uh, Flossie Watson and um, Mrs. Van Wormer, Bessie Van Wormer, playing there. They play. They were silent movies, I'm pretty sure, but every Saturday night we went there. And when you say they played at the movies, tell me what you They played... Uh, the piano. The piano was in the right hand, upper right hand corner, and they played while the, I suppose maybe they saw the movie movie before and got music that sort of went with the action. I don't know. But we thought it was great anyway. There were cowboys, Tom Mix, and all that business. So. Well, do you remember anything else at the Odd Fellows Hall? Oh, yes. They used to have minstrel shows. First can't have them anymore, you know. But they were fun. We people would, you know, local talent, you know. And one time the Presbyterian Church down here put on a big show. They had somebody come in that was in the, it was uh, in theater that really directed it. it. Was really it was good. And uh, what else did they do down there? My father was a Odd Fellows Hall, you know. My father was a member of the Odd Fellows. Upstairs, they had uh, why they ever built that big building. I don't know. I don't think there are any odd fellows anymore. Maybe out in in uh, West, maybe or out in uh, New England. I never but, hear of them. But they had parties, and my my mother was a Rebecca. And uh, we went to things they had. As I say, in the winter, we did a lot of things in the winter because there was no snow. Down back here at Jabonowski's, we used to ride down the hills, and, and uh, I had a pair of skis. No, no, not like today, just plain skis. And we'd go right down the hole and uh, sleighs and everything, and we have to come all the way up the hill again, you know. And, uh, and skate on Severson's Pond, that was the greatest. How did that work? Oh, great. I about freeze my feet. But he, and then he'd come down, and the ice would be like that, thick, and he'd come with the, the horses and cut the ice, you know. And uh, he'd build a big bonfire for us lots of times there. And uh, we all, just everybody about skated there. And I remember that there was a, I think it's still there, there was like a little um, spring. And we used to drink out of it. We'd get thirsty, you know. Couldn't do it today with all the septic tank, but we could drink it. And wow. Never get sick. But we used to have good time. My, my feet would get so cold when I go home, I think I couldn't even stand on them. My mother used to say, you're going to get chill blinds. <laughs> and I think I did. My feet would burn and itch, you know. Wow. 
but That's uh, something you don't hear of anymore. Chilblains. And the snow, I can remember it drifting right up, even with the terrace here. And then sometimes Phil Severson would take his sleigh and take us on sleigh rides from the church. The church would have him, for, and we'd go on sleigh rides. He was good. He was a gruff old guy. Reed was scared to death of him. One time he teased Reed, and Reed was scared to death of him. But uh, he would take us on sleigh rides, and yeah. And I'd see we had scouts, 4-H. I wasn't much for the scouts. The Girl Scouts, I was. Yeah, they had Girl Scouts. Now, the Bosberg was into Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. That Phoebe that lived with them, she was adopted. Phoebe Lene, I think yeah. it was. And she was in, and, uh, but that when that was when school was mostly, you know. Mm -hmm. who, who, were, uh, who were your friends? You mentioned Marjorie. Yeah, who mostly was? Marjorie and Jane Cummings. Oh. Now, she was one of my best friends. She was my age. We fight, but we got along. And I, I can remember her father so well, Jim Cummings. We tease him. What do you, what do you remember about him? You know? I just remember him being an old sick man. Yeah. And her mother was younger than he. She used to play at the movie place, you know. She was a very smart, talented woman, you know. But he was, I think he had, as you say, he worked in the quarry up there. And he had some kind of lung, whether not emphysema, the the silica, pack, lungs, so pack so. yeah, because he was always he couldn't breathe and he was coughing and it was yuck. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I can remember him sitting in that chair and we tease him. It was terrible. I'd stay overnight, and we we he'd try to get up. The poor guy he couldn't get up. We would get up and we would tease him and hi hide under the bed and he'd take his cane and go like this, try to hook us and get us off from under the bed. And he'd say some choice words to us, too. <laughs> but then Jane, uh, as I say, she turned out to be a minister. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there was other ones we played with. There was Luther Patton, who was a minister. His father was a minister. John Hombeck that just died. Donnie Spore. They were a little older than I was. Jane was more my age. And mostly Margie was, we were friends. Our mothers were friends. And another thing. Our mothers would take us, a big deal in the, in the fall was going to the Altima Fair. We'd go down to the railroad station, was long gone, get on the train, go all day to the fair, and then come back. It was a big deal, go in the grandstand, go on all the rides. And another thing, we'd go to Albany on the bus, get the bus here by the church. I think that was the Hunkerford ran it then. And my mother, and we'd go all day. And shop, you know, Myers and Whitney's was in Albany, and we'd go and have lunch and and buy clothes and where the State College owns the D and H building was a plaza there. That's where you got the bus. Of course, that's all changed. So, yeah. and uh, but boy, that was a big day. And how many times did you do that a year? Something like that. Oh, to go to the Albany. Yeah. Oh, my mother, we'd go. Once a month, anyway, maybe, you know. And of course, the, just the fair was only once a year. And uh, but uh, and the church picnics. We had church picnics. We would go up to Burn, and that place is still there. I think it's apartment house now. I can remember going to church picnics up there. And uh, how would you get up there? Uh, people with cars. Cars like in the, they didn't even have school buses either because we had like a basketball team even in this school up here and our parents would take us. Different parents would drive the team. So Marion Curlette was our basketball coach. Yeah. Mike Pafunda was the, the fellas. We had a good time. Virginia Pitcher's father used to referee. We had some gay times, I tell you. And then they had a town basketball team, and we used to go to see that, you know. We when we were it. older, Mary Torque was a good friend of mine, too. I, I palled around with her. Oh. Mary, what's her name now, Mary? 
You know where I'm talking about Mary torts Hill. down there. Mary P Sharon. Sharon. I haven't seen her lately. Oh, we used to we used to be best friends go around. And uh, I'd stay down at her house, she'd stay up here. And when we were when the Grove Hotel got to be sort of it wasn't nice anymore. There was they used to have some characters that stayed around there and crazy dances at night and we'd stay and watch them, you know. And it was really but uh, I can remember the Grove Hotel when the, I can't think of the name of the people that ran it, but going in and seeing, I often wonder what happened to that big bar that was in there. It was beautiful, as I remember. And my father was saying it was a solid mahogany bar or something in there. It was out of there. Too bad they did. But I don't know what they would do with it if they had it, you know. They should have never taken that station house down. Yeah. Never, never. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we'd go there and talk to the Mr. Mead and the station masters, you know. So you take a walk down there and go over? You take Mary Torx. See, Mary and I would go back and forth. She'd come up here and I'd go there. Now, what, inside the station when you went in, do you, do you remember anything about inside the station? Yeah, just, well, it's just, just benches, you know. That's all I can remember, you know. I heard it was a round radiator in there. Do you remember the round radiator? Gee, I don't know. Huh? I can't remember that. But I can remember the uh, telegraph, telegrapher, would you call him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was Mr. Mead and Mr. Hodge worked there, too. Doris Relier's father worked there. And it was, what else? And then I can remember the Rickies always had the store. And then there was a, the barber shop was down there next to the Harris house. And Talk about the barbershop. Who's that, Emily Blessing? Hmm? Who had the barbershop then, Blessing? No, I think Charlie Fields ran it then. I can't remember who else. They had the barbershop. We'll go back and, a few uh, years. Go um, back a couple of years. And uh, you, you remember anything about your grandfather? How loud along the Altamont Road? Oh, I don't remember him living there. No, he lived down here when I knew him. He lived where. Uh, the name of the people that live there, next, right next to where my nephew lives. Schultz there. Mm -hmm. He lived in that house, and then he lived there with my mother's, with my aunt. And then my other aunt and Uncle Rockwell bought the house, and then they sold that to Gray's. And Gray's sold it to this, my, I don't know who else bought it. I lost track, you know. But it was a big, you know, up here. But I don't remember him up there. No, that was before my time. Uh -huh. Yeah. But my mother's uh, picture I have, I, that that's an old picture. That my mother was a little girl then, when that picture was taken. But I could remember her telling me many things about the Altamont, you know, road, and going to the Tigert School. Now they call it the Vale, or what do they call? It? <coughs> Esther calls it something else. Yeah. Uh, that's when her mother taught. I don't even remember that. But my mother, that's when my mother went there. That was old. My mother was in uh, Weidman's, Catherine Weidman's mother went there. The Martins. The old, a lot of them. They were a big family. My mother was the Smiths and the Martins and the Crownses and the Hennessys. Well, your mother would probably be what? Uh, Over 100 years old. 69 and she was 39 when I was born. I figured that 108 years old. Right. Hmm. Yeah. And they all walked to school from all around, I guess. There wasn't any cars or anything, you know. So she probably was going to that school around 1890 then. You know, she was eight years old. Yeah. And she went directly to Omni Business College from that school. Uh, and I have a book here that I want to, I think I'm going to take into Omni, maybe it's in the other room, I found it, where it, her penmanship was beautiful. And her punctuation, her spelling, you know, they taught a lot of things in those days that the kids don't do today. You know, you wonder, there was, it's just that the, 
World War II came and the scientific and the computers and all, and that's what, you know. But they still had smart people in those days, you know. Won't get an argument from me on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but she did, she went. There were very few people, our parents, that went to high school, even high school. Now, the Vosburgs were an exception. I think Mildred and all of them went to Wellesley or someplace. Vassar. Vassar? All right, pardon me. And, but our generation, they started sending their kids to college, you know. Like, I went to college. Margie went to college. Who else? Donald Spore was a dentist. Virginia Pitcher went to college. In fact, she and I both went, graduated from Russell Sage. She's way ahead of me. And, uh, but one of the parents that we went to school with, a lot of them were uh, second generation from uh, Italian and Polish, and their parents weren't educated, you know. They were hard-working people. Now, for example, you mentioned, I can't imagine uh, when you're mentioning that, that any of the talks went to college. Oh, no, no, no. Why do you say, like, oh, no, no, that way? Well, none of the Rickies did either. Corrine did, but she's a, but none of the, like Julia Fields, and they never that, but their children went to college. Very, very few of them went to high school. Let's say it got through high school. And there was Altamont High School. Now, Gert got, went to Altamont High School, I think. And uh, now Esther, of course, went to college. Her mother was a teacher. So you're saying, you're saying that a lot of people in your generation, it seems very odd, really, that people in their late 60s and 70s, and Gert, like in her, yeah. in Virginia 70s, yeah. that's not too many women here went to college. Or no, they didn't. They didn't. I mean, when I think of like they the got number, married. And well, my mother was for education. She, you know, she thought I had to be educated. And if I'd done what she wanted me to do, I'd probably been better off. She wanted me to go into business, go to business. She wanted me to go to college, but she wanted to take business. She says, then you can be in a secretary or you can teach business. And that's what I should have done, but I didn't. But she, uh, no. Well, what do you think she learned that, you know, the importance of education? Or well, we maybe an Omni Business College. I don't know. She read a lot. We were always, I read, was always a lot of books around. We read. And uh, my father, they never, he went, I don't think he went to high school. Well, my mother didn't either. There wasn't any high school for her. They had normal schools in those days, you know, some of the more affluent, you know. But I can't, other than Bosbergs and Guffins, I can't think of any of them that were Jocelyn. Yeah, I guess uh, Marguerite's father was a principal. But then they went to, like, Oneonta Normal School, uh -huh. and they didn't get, they got certification. I don't think they got degrees like they do today in education and BS and um, you know, yeah. but uh, well, there wasn't there to learn. You know, they didn't have the wide. So. Now, did you ever walk down, say, to the cider factory when you were younger? You oh ever... yes, it was right near uh, Mary Torx. Went down there. What do you recall about that? Anything in particular? The smell. <laughs> so the old apples. You know, Bill worked there. My husband worked there. Most everybody in the village worked there. It was during the depression. Why did he make twenty cents an hour or something? People won't believe it. When I started working, I made 89 cents an hour in Omni Hospital Medical Center. And you worked. What, describe the smell. What do you, what do you remember? It was from uh, apples, fermenting the apples, you know, and vinegar. They made vinegar and prune juice. And, uh, but it was a job, you know. And, of course, the foundry was there. Bill was talking about the foundry. His father was in the foundry. And there was a lot of, of work around, you know. But, see, when World War II came, that changed everything around here. What, what do you mean by that? Well, the, everybody went to, in the Army, except a certain few. And uh, so 
like Virginia. And I, Virginia and I used to watch for airplanes, I think. We used to go way over some road and we'd, I think i take sewing or something and it's for airplane spotters, you know, during the war, you know. I don't think we ever saw any airplanes that were <laughs> questionable or not. But, uh, but there was nobody around and everything changed in the war. They so you, do you remember, you say you remember what it was like when nobody was around? Oh, yes. Yeah, right. well, I was married to Bill. What, what, what was it like? Describe it. What, what did it feel like? It didn't feel very nice because you had blackouts all the time. You know, you had to pull the shades down and, and uh, you know, that some of the fellas got killed, you know. And I remember one time I didn't hear from Bill a long, long time and I got all worried, you know. And he was in Germany then. And uh, Marjorie Hainer's husband got seriously wounded, but he came back. Two of my friends, Lockwood's, mm -hmm. you know, were killed. One of the Hempel boys was killed. Every, they were all, Mike was, Julian, Lantley's, Bill and his brothers, Torx, they were all in the service. All except Harold Mead, Jerry Badgley, and Porter Reed. That's the only ones I can think. And what did the women do? Did, did they do anything special? No, we, sort of... well, a lot of us had kids. We had children. I had Reed. And we get together and, you know, had birthday parties and, and uh, sent letters to the fellas, mostly. And of course, my father was here. I wanted to go in the service. And, but I didn't because I had my father and Bill didn't want me to go anyway. But uh, you wanted to go in mm, before. I just wanted to go. So I wish I'd have gone now. <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> Maybe I think I would. But uh, but uh, anyway, no, it was just. Uh, well, we had, there were still people, they still had things at the firehouse and everything that they invited all the people we went, you know, but it was a long haul, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a happy time. Yeah. The kids today, if they had some of the young ones, you know, yeah. you didn't have any, everything you wanted, you didn't have things to eat that you wanted to, you didn't have coffee, you didn't have so much sugar, you didn't have butter, you didn't have well, they just didn't have it. Everybody was in the same boat, so what's the difference? But once they come home, then you got the, they got, they got better jobs, and the things started booming, and we forgot about it. But it wasn't a very. I hope there's never any other war like that one. It was a, you know. Now, you had rations. Oh, sure, right. books. Yeah. Uh, how did that work? Oh, I can't remember. You got books. You could have so much meat, I know. They rationed everything, cigarettes, they rationed flour, they, I don't know about flour, they rationed sugar, coffee. Oh, they had that awful stuff in the coffee. What was it? Oh, it was terrible. They mix them to, to, in the coffee. I can't think of it. Okra, not okra. Chicory. Chicory, yeah, it was terrible. And oil, you had to be careful. We had coal then. Our furnace, we didn't convert. And uh, gasoline, of course, there weren't as many cars as there are today. You didn't do very much, let me tell you. So. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you, you mention it changed radically when, when the fellows came back? Oh, how, yes. How well, one by one, uh, they, there was more industry opened up, you know. Bill went with the telephone. He went back to the to Duffy Mott because he had to have a job, and but he didn't stay there. He went into the telephone company. That's where he got a start. Didn't make much at the start, but he did all right and got a you know. Today the kids want big jobs at the start, you know, and listen to me what I'm telling you. Of course, you'll probably be qualified for a good salary job. It's an altogether different, and I'm not criticizing, you know, but. Uh, I mean, it's, when you look back, you know, I think of some kids I went to school with, and boy, 
they did well, and people thought they didn't. They were kind of stupid, but they weren't stupid. They were maybe so maybe they couldn't do a lot of math or something. But I know some that ended up good, successful business people, you know, just by hard work and everything. Does anybody in particular come to mind? Kenny Tice is one, and he's dead. Mm -hmm. I was always very fond of Kenny, and he came from a family that was not, you know, and he worked hard, and he had a had a beautiful business, married a nice girl, and uh, and I say, as I said, a lot of the there was a Polish and and, the, and Italians. They all did well because they, they worked hard. They had to work, you know. And their parents, a lot of them, were spoke broken English. They couldn't, you know. Who comes to mind? I have some people in mind. Who? Uh... Well, Torx and Ricky's. They were all, you know. I think Julia's, um, I think the father and mother were born here. I'm not sure. Yes, I don't think they, maybe one of them came over from Italy, but the Cupics, the Samillas, and the Timptions. Who else? Timptions were what nationality? Polish. Polish. Well, they call them Timptitians, but, but it's Timption, I think. T Y M C H Y M. They lived up. And, um, oh, who else was? Oh, Julian's, Mahalski's. They worked in the foundries and then, you know, they had farms. And uh, they all did, you know. I see them once in a while, you know, for, you know, my friends. I'm glad to see them, you know. So well, what is that, when you, you say you're glad to see them, obviously Warriorsville is very different in that time because it was so self-contained. Oh, yes, small. yeah. So there was like a, a, a lot of them lived in outlying districts up near School Road and up in that section, the Timptions and, uh, well, no, the Yulians and all of them lived on, what is that street, Railroad Avenue that Prospect, goes up? Prospect. Is that Prospect? Mm -hmm. Bill always called it Spaghetti Alley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, how come? With Italians up there. They used to have some times, you know, they, my, his father made home brew, and they made wine. And there was the Coco, this Teddy Coco lived down. It was a big, you know, there was some characters in this town, let me tell you. So. Now, if you talk to some of the Italian people, uh, what they will say is that there was an outright prejudice against them, but that some people didn't do the Italians as well as... That's right, they didn't. They used to... You know, think well. They're just Italians, or you know, and uh, I don't know why. Because one of my best friends was Julia Julia, and I don't know if you know her or not. She lives up in Pheasant Run now, and I don't see her as much as I'd like to. But she was—that's uh, Mike's sister—and uh, we went to school together. She wasn't a good student, really. And I don't think she ever got out of eighth grade, even to eighth grade. I don't know. And Charlie, you know, some of them didn't. But uh, they had to work. That's the thing of it is, the, they when they get a certain age, their parents would say, just go out and work, and then they'd have to bring, bring the money in, give the money to their parents. So, so it was part of the... Uh, it was the way they lived, yeah. that's all. They had big families. The Thomases were Italian. Nelson Thomas was... You know Nelson Thomas? He's or Polish. He's Polish. And of course Wanda died. And there's a Jenny Sickles, that's his sister. And they're real they're smart, you know, they were smart in school. They all went to high school. I guess they went to Del Mar. No, they I think Jenny they had, they had got the high school up here. Jenny's younger than I am. So but I went to Del Mar, so. Uh, let's go back a second. When you were small, when we were talking earlier in the winter, uh, ice skating and stuff, uh, did you swim during the summer ever? Oh, yes. We used to swim. We used to swim down in the D&H. One thing, go walk down the tracks and go down there and swim in the D&H. And then we also, they would dam the creek up here back of where, I don't know who lives there now, but Friars owned the place. Uh, Margaret Berriman's father owned the, the place there, and we'd dam it up and we'd go swimming back there. 
just on our own, and we also swam up at Window Specs. They had a place, and then Bendusas had a grove up there. We swim right in this creek here. Can't now, of course. But, uh, oh, we'd swim every day. You say you can't now, what do you mean? Well, it's con so contaminated, you know. But they'd dam it up, and we would swim. And um, I don't know how I learned to swim, but I just did. I don't know, you know, remember how you do things. Now you have to go to swimming class and everything. Of course, you're taught correctly today, let's say, but you just just learn to swim, that's all. And uh, Just like you said in reading and writing. Yeah, I don't remember. I do remember <laughs> doing this Palmer Method business. where you, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, round and round. And I can remember, I don't think it was Ann Van Linda. It might have been, but she wasn't above doing it. If you didn't hold your hands right, click. Crack you right over the hand with a, something, a pencil or something, you know. You have to hold your hands just so, you know. And there were some beautiful writers. I'm not one of them, but some of them are. There. Today, look at how some of the doctors write. Can't read it. But they had, that's the way we're taught. Now, when you were talking about the Stevenson Farm, obviously, at that time, there was no road over there. No, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, this was this house was here. To the right here was a smokehouse, and then a shed that held some coal, like, and then the outhouse. All right. On this side here, he built that what's apartments back there. That was a cow barn. That was a very modern cow barn. Back in there was a huge barn. Well, you got it, pictures in your book. There was a wagon house, a milk house, and an ice house. It was really quite a farm, you know. And, but when they come in, they took it all, you know. Now, did you ever walk up into the farm where the houses are in Salem Hills now? Oh, sure. But how did you get across there? Do you remember? There was a little bridge, I think, because it was all apple orchard back in there. I think there were, or maybe we just went in the creek. I don't know. Probably did. I was, I used to come home wet all the time. You know, but uh, see, it, I, it, it's so changed now, but you can't, people don't believe it. it. was It was really nice. It really was. It was back in there. So did you see any more apple trees up there? Oh, yeah. I think there's still some in Salem Hills. I think they, in some of the houses, still have an old apple tree. Because when I used to walk there, I'd see an old apple tree, old apple orchard. And it goes right straight over to New Salem, or New Scotland, into the Yeoman's Farm, I think, or one in there. Sam's Farm. Sam Yeoman's, yeah, maybe, yeah. Because, uh, but Phil, it was all, yeah, it was all orchards because, uh, they would go out, and the cows would be out there. I can remember. I always remember they had a, always had a mean bull, and I was scared of the bull. <laughs> they had an old man. It was he was a relative of theirs, and the bull would get mean, and he'd take a pitchfork and go right after that bull. He was a little old man. He was really Elmer. It was. Elmer Grote, because he was a brother-in-law of Mrs. Severson, but he worked for him, you know. And the, the cows would be all up in there, and uh, yeah, it was. Well, did you ever go into the milk house? Hmm? Did you ever go into the milk house, for example? Oh, sure. The milk house was a little house right here. And uh, I can't remember how they did it when, before they bottled. Then they bought a bottling machine. You know, uh -huh. and uh, the Clifford and Stella, and they they built the business up where Phil he just delivered milk like Miney Crouch used to deliver milk. They you'd have a pan and they come and put milk in your pan. It, I mean, wonder you wonder you didn't really get sick, sick, sick. Well, <clears throat> we did. We did had get measles and all the stuff that we weren't immunized against. Right. You know, whooping cough, and I never had that. I don't think. And everything else. But when you were very young, what doctors did you go to? Dr. Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. And then there was a Dr. Land that came in. 
Then there was doctors in Delmar my mother took me to, Dr. Van Wert and Dr. Brown. There was a Dr. Holmes. They were all old doctors. Is there anything you remember about Dr. Joslin? That's oh, yes, he was a jolly old guy. He was, everybody knew Dr. Joslin, yeah. I remember he came to see me when I was a little girl there, when I had measles, the old, not the German measles, the old black measles, I guess they used to call them. Oh, I was really sick. And uh, when I got through, they left me with nosebleeds. I All of a sudden, my nose would bleed. And he'd have to come rushing up and pack my nose, I can remember. Oh, I was sick. And with sore throats, we'd have sore throats. It's a wonder. My mother, that's what happened. My mother's heart, those sore throats, you know, the strep throats. And they had no antibiotics, you know. We had none of that. That's why. Then they started with the sulfur sulfonilamide, you know, and that was wreck your kidneys and a lot of stuff. And then the penicillin, and now there's too much penicillin. Too many antibiotics, but. Okay. Yeah, back on? Yeah. So, <laughs> all finished. <laughs> all right. Well, another question, I mean, we were talking about food, well, milk, anyway. People didn't eat out in restaurants in those days. Oh. Very often. Now another thing, I can remember that my father, he had an old, always had Buick cars. And I remember when, when I was real small, he had an old open one, you know. Can I get up or not? There's somebody at the back door. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Sure. I thought it was a cat. No, oh, a cat doesn't oh, knock yeah. us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see the mic. Oh. Here we go. There. Okay, yeah. All right. Because it can be down like any place. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. all right. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, no, when my father was in the Schaefer store, of course, my mother worked hard. She helped him every Saturday. And she, I don't know if she did during the week or not, but every Sunday, usually, he had a, he bought another Buick, a nice, well, it was a night be, must have been in like in 1930, maybe. We, we go on like trips. It was a trip we'd go to to Skahari, to the Parrot House to eat sometimes. And and Duanesburg, they had the hub restaurant up there, we'd go up there. And it was quite a jaunt for those cars. And today you can go in fifteen minutes, you know. But we used to go about he did, we went out then and ate on Sundays, different places, you know. Yeah, you know, we'd take her out. Was were there any places in the village to eat? I don't think so, no. Well maybe down to they fed them down to the Harris house, but my mother wouldn't be caught dead any place there was beer or anything, you know. But I don't know, maybe it was prohibition, there wasn't beer. And Grove Hotel sold meals, but no, they didn't go like that. But this is when I was like, oh, I was in maybe 12 years old then, you know, 9 to 12. But we used to, he used to go out like that to eat, you know. Now you said your mother wouldn't be caught dead where there was beer? Oh, they were all WCTU. <laughs> My father did, wasn't though, but no. You know, there was prohibition, you know, and they were against liquor. Most of the ladies in the church was around here. There weren't, you know, and. Was your mother at WCTU? Oh, I think so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe she didn't. I don't know. But she was brought up strict, you know. She My father wasn't at WCTU. Or, or, you know, he liked to. <laughs> you like to have a drink now and then? Yeah. So your mother, your mother was a Methodist? Oh, yes. Yeah. So that, that would be understandable. Yeah. Now, speaking of Methodists, another Methodist comes to mind who was a prohibitionist, Frank Van Orkin. Oh, yeah. My father hated him. They didn't like each other. I tell Gert that. I don't think she understands. Well, but they, what, do you, what do you think was there? What do you, uh, well, both of them were a little bit. With all his Methodism, Frank was a little. My father was, too, to tell you the truth. They connive and... They had some dealings, and one that said the other was with crooked, to tell you the truth. Now, I don't know who it was. They used to accuse each other of being crooked? Yeah, they, well, Frank Van Auken was always, you know, he'd blow out, you know. And he was big in the church, you know. Yeah. And the go prayer meeting, amen, and all that. But he brought Gert up, and he was good to Gert, you know. 
but my father didn't like him. I don't know whatever happened. I think it was something, and I shouldn't maybe tell this, it was over the Griffin sisters that lived down there. He tried to buy the house or something, and my father thought he was taking advantage of them. I don't know, you can't believe what you hear, but he, my father did not like Ray Well, the uh, New Scotland Historical Society in May, I'm gonna do a little paper. Yeah. Uh, when the town went dry in 1903, Frank Van Orkin was the head of the Lower Nord League. And they hired a detective from Albany to come out and spy on uh, Peter's hotel down here. So I'm going to do a little I'll, paper. I'll bet he did. He did? Sure. That's why my father probably didn't like him. <laughs> Sneaky. I, I was. They hired, uh, you talked about the uh, Griffin sisters. Yeah. What, what was that? They had a little store. They sold thread and odds and ends. Yeah, I don't know all they. It was right next to the Schaefer store. There was two little uh, sisters, unmarried sisters, cute little sisters. And they had the place that later became the pharmacy? No, and then a fellow by the name of Hoffy ran it. And he had a, uh, he was a little more liberal. And I, I guess he had ice cream and stuff like that. And then the drugstore, I, I can't remember. Remember, Hoff, he was, he was a real sport, I guess. And the, then the drugstore, I can't remember the, oh, then Sutton's ran it, too, a family by the name, a Jewish family, Sutton's. Now, I don't know what they, I, they think they just carried, it wasn't a drugstore. And the, I, I went to school with the, the one son was Jerome, and he t was turned out to be a, I don't I think a doctor. And Bertha was the other daughter. She was, of course, Jewish people for education. You know, they were they were well educated. And I can't Harry Sutton and Mrs. Sutton. I can't remember her name. They were nice people. You know, but, they ran a little store. But Griffin, so it was Griffin then. Hoffman. Griffin was a Griffin. Griffin, I think. Yeah, I think Griffin. that was the Griffin. first. Griffin, I think yeah, it was. Miss Griffin. Miss Griffin. Yeah. Oh, to Miss Griffin, yeah. That you went into that store? Oh, yeah, when I was a little, I guess I did. I can just remember, I was little. They were little old ladies that had thread and I don't know all they sold. Maybe material where people sold, you know. I, I just don't know all they, I don't think they sold anything to eat in there. I can't remember. And they had the store there when your father had the store next door? Yes. Hmm. And then they saw, I don't know whatever happened to them. Maybe they died or something, I don't know. What was across the street where Stewart's was? There was a gas station there. Yeah, Frank had Smith had that, but that, I don't know what was there before. Seems to me there was an open field at one time. I can remember the old, where they made barrels. Cooper shop. I can vaguely remember that, and I remember one day in the winter, the snowstorm, the roof caved in. Isn't that funny how you can remember that? And that was it? That, I don't know whatever happened, whether they made barrels, I guess. Don't the Cooper shop make barrels? Yeah. That was Giffen. That was John Giffen, I think. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So. Uh, Pardon no, me. No. <coughs> I get sneezing. I sneeze <coughs> forever. Um, Maybe so. <coughs> oh, pardon me. It's all right. And God bless. So I can sneeze about 14 times sometimes. Hmm. And, uh, but I can remember. And I remember one time playing with, when I was, uh, my father ran the store, playing with Douglas Russo. We were on a teeter thing, and the siren rang. I can remember it. Huh. I was up, and boy, he ran, and I came down. And they had the old cart, the thing that they pulled, the hose thing that rolled around, and I don't remember where the fire was, but I can remember that. It's wondering I didn't get killed. I was up in the air. Down I came. He ran to see where the fire was, you know, and I, hmm. but I can remember that old hose cart. And I can remember then the first fire engine too. Of course, we had we haven't had any bad fires here. Thank the Lord, we had some bad ones in this town. Yeah.
the mills, bunk mills, and that in the block down there that the burnt where those children burnt that Batcher time. Kids. Bat Batcher kids, yeah. That was bad. And I met a guy recently who was in, who was the uh, related to the man whose kids they were, I think. I think that man is still George Batcher or something. I think he might be still alive. The father. Well, there's a lot of Batchers. But the father of those kids. I think is he dead. still alive? I think so. His, his I know Charlie Batcher. Name was, was it Charlie. Charlie. So I think it was up in Brown Burn now. Does somewhere? he? God, he must be old. I think that. Uh, oh, he had a lot of kids. Yeah. Mm. Well, maybe one of the maybe one of the brothers or sisters of the kid who died. Yeah. Uh, this guy's name is Batcher. Yes, he had two sons by his first wife. Uh -huh. Oh, very handsome boys. She was a. a Lovely mom. Then he married another, and he had all these kids. And I'm telling you, there was a lot of them. And I don't know. That's one of that bunch that died. I got in there. Hmm. You uh, you told me once about the Bloomingdale. Did you know them at all? Mm, yeah. Well, what do you what do you remember about the Bloomingdale kids? Or oh, gee, I went to school with them too. Frederick and Frank was older than I, and of course they Bloomingdale. He had money, and they always sent Frank to Albany Academy. But Freddie went up to school with, and mm -hmm. and they're both alive because Frank worked for the telephone company and I don't know where Freddie is. I've been in touch with them. Well, have you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Where's Freddie? Uh, Fred is in Harry, I think. Is he? He was a quiet kid, never mm -hmm. said much, smart in school and for, you know, you know standard, you know. And Frank uh, lives on circus. Yeah. He's still out. That's where he ended yeah. up. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Frank just sent me pictures of the grandfather's, their father's, Fred's car. Oh, yeah. So he's had a lot of cars, I guess. Oh, yeah. He was a sport, let me tell you. My tell, I can remember when I was a kid that people tell him, but he had that amount of money, you know, ended up with. Well, as a matter of fact, Frank said he went to Albany Academy for three years and then graduated here. Oh, did he and graduate from Delmar? Yeah, I guess. Delmar, yes. Yeah, so yeah, he did go to money. Academy for three years, and he'd end up, well, I, I think their money gave out. I'm not sure. Well, because the father, the father was a, uh, and the, and the mother, they had it, but they ended up not to. I don't know why, but I can, you know. Now somebody told me I don't know uh, who told me that the father was a bootlegger. He was, yeah. What, what do you know? You anything about that? Or I always story? I heard he was from my father. You know, he was. <laughs> my father knew what was going on around. <laughs> And I, yeah, I think he was a bootlegger, run from Canada. And my father, he's, he's telling me things, you know, and he said, well, they had a lot of money. And he says one time that, that uh, uh, Fred Bloomingdale lit a cigar with a $50 bill or something. You know, in those days, easy come, easy go. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But the old man is one built the business, and the son, I guess. But he had big cars, you know. Yeah, they had money. They were Bloomingdale houses down here, and mm -hmm. yeah. What about so, John Cummings? Was he still alive? James Cummings' brother? I don't think so. Yeah. He couldn't be. He was younger than Jim Cummings. Mm -hmm. They had a camp at Helderberg Lake, and we used to go up there, Jane and I. Would they take us up there? Yeah. yeah. No, he's got to be dead. But did you, was he alive when you were younger? Oh, yeah, John? Sh sure. Do you remember anything at all about him? Well, he was younger than his brother, Jim, an altogether nicer looking man, younger, yeah. But I can't really remember anything about him other than they had a camp at Heldeberg Lake and we used to go up there to see him. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane's mother would take us. <clears throat> and he said Frank Smith at the gas station, that's Smitty's father, right? Yeah, was Smitty's father. They, they, but I don't know what was there before. I think it was just an open field or something. I don't know. And then McCann had it, too. McCann and then... See, that was during the war when McCann ran it. Huh. And, and then Frank was there, too, yeah, because Frank lived, they lived upstairs. Hmm. So Smitty grew up there? Yeah. Yeah. Smitty and his brother and a sister. He had a brother and a sister. Yeah. Well, then who owned uh, who owned Smitty's now at that time? You remember? Kramer's owned it. There was a Kramer that owned the grill, 
And before that, uh, who was the one that, hmm, can't remember the name. I, mm, Albright, Albright owned it up there. Ernie Hoare, no, Ernie was. No, this was a, it was a Kermit. The one son's name was Kermit, and the daughter, sister's name was Ruth. And another thing comes to my memory, they had a little car, and for some reason or other, right out in front of the house, they got in an accident, and she went through the windshield or in the tree or something. She got all bloodied up, and my mother ran out with sheets and everything, and she was really disfigured and stayed disfigured. I suppose they didn't have the plastic surgery. I don't think another car hit him. I think he just went out and hit the pole or something. I don't know. Certainly wasn't speeding, I don't think. He had much speeding in those days. Yeah. So, what do you what do you remember about the log cabin up the street here? You know the. Uh, oh yeah, Burbick Road. Yeah. And they used to sell things there. I think I was, and then the, and then that, up ahead. Did everybody tell you about up ahead? The old, the, he was a, worked on the railroad, and he was a. Polish guy, I think, and he was a character. He'd get drinking, you know, but he was. He lived there for a while, but then there was somebody who ran it. Was the head of grill? What was the name? Da. There was a somebody had a grill yeah, in I that. Can't, I know. I can't remember the. Because uh, I remember. So. People have told me the name of that. I can't, I can't think of her name. Deanie. Oh, oh, that's a, no, that's a, that's a new name for me. Deanie, I think, oh. was the one that. That used to, they used to, she sold, well, see, they had, must have been after re, they had uh, repealed uh, prohibition. You know, I, see, I was little, and then I was away for a long time. Mm -hmm. I was in training, and then the war, and I, I can remember, you know, certain things, you know. Do you, you, uh, you recall the, uh, the telephone exchange? Yeah, uh, Mrs. Ward. Mm -hmm ran it, the switchboard, yeah. It's a building is still there. It's a nice little house there. Did you ever go into that? No, I don't think so. I might have, but I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. I the and I remember the when the library was with Mrs. Brucier had the library where I think it was down in the block originally when Greaseman started the library. I, that's before me. But then I can remember in that where those apartments were down by the Pete Bach house you stone. There was a, a library in there that I used to go to, Miss Adelaide Brucia. And I think Mildred Guffin ran, worked in there. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was the library. And then where else was? Then the library was in the school, I guess. And so, the post office at that time was where? What do you recall the post office? Well, right? the post office was way down in the block, and I don't know whether that's gone there or not. And then, of course, Charlie Fields bought the building and moved it up there. And uh, so, then the new post office. So, mm -hmm. we always had to go get our mail, and then we had it delivered here, you know. Let me ask you, I do just know, I have like another one or two questions because we can sort of wrap it up now. We're probably running out of tape too. Uh, what was your sense? I talked to some people, uh, Nelson Thomas, for example, is one who, who still rails against Salem Hills. It's almost as if it looks like. Oh, I know, yesterday. yeah. What, what was the sense of the village generally when Salem Hills came? Oh, they didn't want it. it Charles Cur Charlie Curlett was the town leader. He was very much opposed to it. He says, you're going to see the day when you regret that Salem Hills. But I was glad. I didn't have any ill feeling toward it. And I walk up there, and the houses look so pretty. Sure, I miss all this country stuff, but you can't, you've got to pr progress, you know. But I had no ill feeling at all toward it. Charlie Curlett was a supervisor? No, he was town leader. Oh, you like the... Yeah, uh, old politician. Yeah. And uh, he said that you'll see that, of course, it made a lot of changes because our school had to grow, the people. But it isn't a people that move there. It's not particularly a transient people. They, some of them 
our move, you know, our transfer jobs. But and it, it's it's uh, it's their homes are nice, and I have nothing against them. Yeah. Well, a lot of people living up there twenty years now. Oh yeah, my son lived up there. Reed lived Reed there. Did. Oh, had a home. Sure, when he's first married, she lived there. Yep, oh. right on the main seat. What's the one that goes in here, Coven? See, Coven. Yeah, he went right straight around. Yeah, he lived right. Coven trees over to the left, I think, and seems to the right the first one. No, What's this one that goes in here? Stonington Hill. That's what he lived on Stonington yeah. Hill, right on that down up. Yeah. No. Oh, but I know they complained, you know, a lot, you know, and they complained about their sewage bit and all like that, and but. Uh, I thought it was great that the village took over the sewage. I thought that was the only thing they could do to take it over. Yeah. You know, I not, but I think you are expanding too much a little because you worry about the water supply. And uh, this back here, I'm not wasn't. I figured they build those houses were supposed to be so expensive, maybe nobody buy them. That Rodrigue was going to build there. I guess they put a kibosh on that, but uh, I think you can overexpand. I don't know what they're going to do. You see all this building, something's going to, I don't, maybe I'm being old, but your natural resources are going to water or something. It's, you only got so much to go around. That's know? right, yeah. yeah. And I don't, for one, I don't like that kind of a house where they're all together like that. I don't, I would be very unhappy. I don't even like it here. It used to be all maple trees, you know. I don't like the, I don't, it, the traffic is terrible since Salem Hills. I do object. Their house is dirty and it's a zoom, zoom and screech. We have a lot of accidents out in front here. At one week there were three, believe it or not. I just, you know what I do? I immediately call the sheriff, then I go out. I just tell them right where it is and then I go out. That's my first, you know. So, but, yeah, for uh, fine there. You remember all the squeals you would hear? Terrible. It was like a, two, three squeals a week. More than yeah. that, yeah. Uh, well, one more like, last question. When you, when you recall youngest, how did they care, take care of snow? They had snow plows, mm -hmm. but they didn't have a means. They didn't have the big payloaders, what, that they could cart it away or anything. But in the old you must have to remember they didn't have the cars in those days either, the traffic, you know. And you didn't have accidents. If you got stuck in the snow, you get shoveled out, I guess. I don't know. But you didn't have a highway department <clears throat> like you have now. You didn't really need it. But they did have uh, village, I guess they had village plows. I don't know. I can't remember, mm -hmm. really. Well, did we leave anyone out or anything out? Beg your pardon? Did we leave anyone out or anything out? No, I don't think so. I don't know. You got me talking. I hope you don't tell everything I said. Somebody will go after me. <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep it on and let's see. So, but other than I can't think of anything else that you want to hear. Yeah, we're talking about it now and a half. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's I like to talk about things. I think about things and people that I know, you know. And, uh, but as I feel bad because I, I knew used to know everybody who lived in every house. I don't know a single person hardly, you know. I do know some of their names, you know. But like the old Jabnowski house, I used to, with the Chrysler family lived there. I used to play with those kids, too. And there was so many. I don't know anybody. Well, like Virginia Pitcher, one. I remember where she lives, where Ann Van Linda lived. That's where her father and mother lived, you know. And of course, I know Ann. She taught me in school. <laughs> She was a corker. And, uh, but as school was different, you know, the, the parents didn't uh, take part or interfere. Like they do, I, I'm, they're not interfering, I'm not saying that. But there was so many parents that were, I'm, they, weren't, had, they weren't college educated and they weren't, they gave it to the teachers to teach the kids, how I, how I want to express it. They minded their own business and let the teachers do their job, you know. And they rarely interfered. And then they started the PTA. And I think it's, it does good, but it's some of it. I don't agree with some of it. Mm -hmm. it, had its, it, it had its 
benefit? No, just like the unions, but they outweighed some of it, you know. Yeah, I know. But they don't interfere. They were the kids, you know. Of course, as I say, there's more to learn today. There's more children, and there's more to be involved with. So, that's it. But I see so many kids today that can't are not supposed to be ready for kindergarten. That aren't supposed to be ready for first grade. Why? And that's why we're paying, that's what I'm against. They got too many teachers that are testing them for this, testing them for that. That's why our school taxes. I don't think you need that many teachers or substitutes or helpers. I said my piece. Can it end then? I don't, they probably will kill me because I have a daughter in law that's a teacher up there, and my other son is a teacher. In fact, he's a principal of one of the schools. But I still think they've got too much. The kids teach them. Yeah. I don't know. Who's your daughter-in-law up here as a teacher? Hmm? Who's your daughter-in-law who's a teacher here? Who did I go to? Your daughter-in-law. Who's, who's she's a third grade teacher, a, a Joanne Schultz. Oh, oh, she's a disciplinarian. The kids are scared of her, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, I, 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 as I say, that's all different. To it's get, more complex. It's oh, simple. today they do have to have more teachers and more things, but I think they could do with less. Yeah. Yeah. I don't envy, I don't envy Reed being a principal of the school. Oh, he's got it down there. He's got quite a bunch of kids down there. Yeah. Problems, yeah. I have a brother who's a principal. I don't envy him. Mm. I had another brother who used to be a principal, and he said, the hell with it. Well, he I don't it. know. He said, I don't need those headaches. Oh, he said it's, uh, it, you know, because they got a lot of people up in the mountains there that are. <laughs> but he started out in Cobuskill, you know, and he loved it, liked it up there. Well, that's where my father came from, Cobuskill, Scary Valley. I love oh, that. Cobuskill, your father came? Cobuskill and Hinesville. Hmm, oh. sure. Well, he lived in Albany, too, but his mother was out there. Yeah, I think that Scary Valley is the greatest. It's where they raise hell hops and Democrats. Did you ever hear that expression? No. <laughs> sure. Scary Valley the Democrats? Oh, there's Scary. In Scary and Cobuskill, the, the town of Scary, they raise hell, hops, and Democrats. The hop yard used to be there, you know. My grandmother worked in them. My father's mother, she was a champion hop picker. You know, and I don't know what hops look like. They grow on vines, I yeah, think, and you berries. pick them. Yeah. They get in the baskets, you know, they make the brew with them, yeah. I like that. I think it's it's beautiful up there, you know. <clears throat> so, well, but, maybe with uh, yeah, hops. you maybe better cut that out about the school. But that's my opinion. Oh, well, that, see that stuff will just uh, that that's my opinion. Yeah. Here we they can, uh, they got. Yeah, I think we're I think we're gonna knock off. Uh, no, we won't. Uh, Kids can't go to school. They it's pretty bad when you flunk out of kindergarten. Kids flunk out of kindergarten. Well, they aren't. I think they're smart, and then they, they tell them they're not ready to go. They're not smart enough to go. Yeah, I know that. Somebody, who was telling me the other day they have to take a test yeah. now to get into kindergarten? Isn't that something? What, like a, a screening test? You know, it's, yeah. it wasn't right, but when we went to school, we went with handicapped kids with Down syndromes and everything. It wasn't right because they couldn't teach those kids. Right. You know, but uh, that's what I say. I wonder how I learned to read. Now they say people can't read, kids can't read, they can't write. I mean, I mean there's a thing when you can't read, it's so long. You learned your lesson. So, 